I guess um, I became a presenter because I have no other transferable skills. Um, I did a very, very obscure degree in Renaissance literature, and it's a source of great upset that um, nobody really wants that in the modern marketplace. Um, I met my darling friend Mel at college, and after that we started doing Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Festival, um, a, a series of sort of character comedy shows, and from that, um, we got asked to write for French and Saunders, which was like every Christmas simultaneously happening in front of me. Mel and I weren't really used to speaking in our own voices for the first 10 years of our career because we were a sketch double act. And so to learn how to be a presenter um, is a fool's errand. We thought there was a certain way of behaving and it turns out yet another 10 years on from that, that all you have to be is yourself and people can come to you or run away from you depending on, on how they find you. I think what attracts me to, to, to the shows that I do is a sense of... I'm a, I'm a very emotional person, actually, so I will get a feeling. And I know that's a vague, very way, vague way of describing it, but it won't be because I've seen the visuals or it won't be because I've necessarily scouted the people that are going to be doing it. I just get a feeling, and oftentimes it will be uh, down to the authenticity of the thing. For example, I do quite a lot of travelling shows, and I'm very curious, and all I need to see is a name. I might just need to see the word Iran or Saudi Arabia. And I, my, my heart will be full of the possibility of, well, many the food, but also the cultural connections and the madness that I'll find along the way and the landscape and the way that the heat will be different and the smells will be different. And then I'm there. And, and then somebody younger gets the job. I'd love to present for one week only Saturday Night Live. For me, it's just the sort of breeding ground for so many exceptional comics and, and what an extraordinary rush it would be to stand amongst them even for a second. Although even putting myself in there in my imagination I feel fraudulent so I'm stepping away now letting them get on with it. I think the biggest challenge for me and I think a lot of people have this is finding a balance between being a freelancer and having a life. I think it's very easy to affix your sense of self-worth to the job that you do and in our game that's, that's, that's crazy because there will be times where you don't work and so if, if you've put all your eggs in that basket, then you, you just feel useless as a human being. So my great lesson has been to love what I do and to feel very fortunate to do it, but to also have nurture the other side of my life. So when the phone doesn't ring, that I'm as happy and that I've got stuff that I can be doing and feeling validated by. I think the key to making a show collaboratively is to understand that you are all cogs in a wheel, that if you disrespect somebody, uh, that if you don't take into consideration the, the trials and tribulations of their job, then you're doing great service to the project as a whole. Um, some of the travelling stuff that I do, I'm away for four months of the year, and if I didn't really love those people and really value them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it, because it's not just the fact that they're great at sound or being a cameraman, they're also really good people who can keep me going when things are difficult, um, who know how to put up a mosquito net. You know, we all have, there's, there's a lot of the great skill set there that you, that you could mine. Why would you, you know, why would you just want to be off on your own ego trip when you can learn so much from other people around you? And I have, and, and if I can learn one thing every day, then I'm happy. I mean, I've got two pieces of advice, I suppose. The first thing would be, you're all, you, you're all you've got, so just be yourself. As the, as the phrase goes, be yourself, everyone else is taken. I love that phrase. I can't remember who said it. It sounds like a sort of Mae West thing. Who knows? I'm sure somebody brighter than me will look it up and, and work it out. But that took a long time in my career to kind of get to that point where you think, I'm okay, just, just, just be who I am. Because there's, there's this amazing thing called a, a remote control. And if someone doesn't like it, they can just move away from you. Um, secondly, I would say if somebody with sort of wonky teeth um, called Mel comes up to you in a very dimly lit bar and says, well, you spend the rest of your working life shackled to me. Just walk away. That's a hiding to nothing right there. I lie, I love her. <laughs>